when China accuses us of being um, uh, pro-Western, for instance, usually um, are able to do two things. The purpose of that disinformation is to instill fears and to mm -hmm. make violation, and in its implications, create an environment. Uh, this is my first uh, visit to Taiwan as Amnesty Secretary General, but there is a long history of relationship between Amnesty and Taiwan. I'm here to assess the progress made by uh, the Taiwan authorities uh, in all in vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, human rights and how they how far they have gone in implementing um, human rights convention. And I'm also here to explore and better understand the impact of uh, the growing tension internationally, the tension between the US and China in particular, but not only, the impact of those tensions on human rights protection in Taiwan. There is no doubt that the entire world <laughs> is looking at what's happening in Taiwan, including um, organizations like, like mine. What have you found out in terms of the implications of these geopolitical tensions between China and, and the U.S. in the Taiwan Strait? Well, I mean, there are, uh, there are many uh, implications, of course. Uh, every, you know, every researcher around the world will tell you that Taiwan is um, particularly victimized by, by disinformation and that the people of Taiwan are being targeted for disinformation. The purpose of that disinformation is to instill fears and to make people believe that um, human rights are no good, human rights are not effective, and that the government of Taiwan cannot protect the people of Taiwan. Another example could be the fear of military intervention. That makes people feel so uncertain, so scared about about the um, about what can happen to them or to their children you know creating such an environment is in and by itself already a form of violation of the rights of the people of of Taiwan let's talk about the the recent um, incident that happened to the Amnesty International. So um, in May, Amnesty International reported that a Uyghur student went missing from the Hong Kong airport and then it turned out to be not true. And this incident has seriously undermined the credibility of the organization. So my passion is what, what happened exactly and how do you rebuild the trust? Um, there are a few words in your question that are not quite correct, so let me, uh, let me rephrase a little bit. When uh, we receive information that the life of an individual may be at risk because for three weeks they have disappeared, Amnesty International should take action and do that on the basis of um, in-depth research. When that particular individual, after three weeks of disappearance, going missing, tell us, I do not want you to be acting for me, that's a moment where we say we stop. Because okay. consent is a, 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 a fundamental principle for our work, as is the principle of do no harm. Okay, so when individuals tell us, we do not want you to work on our behalf, we do not want you to advocate uh, on our case, we do not want you to advertise our case, we absolutely have to uh, follow their instructions right away. And that's what we did. Okay, but I think the information like the public public received is that the organization said he went missing in at the Hong Kong airport, but it turned out that he didn't even go to the airport. So there is kind of like an there inaccurate. In, there are different interpretations of what happened. It is not a question of what happened, what did not happen. The question is, uh, what is the degree of consent that we are currently receiving to speak about this story and 
there is no consent for us to speak about it. Why didn't this information uh, mentioned in the correction of your original statement? I'm adding information for you. Uh, sake, which is Amnesty International work on the basis of the principle of do no harm and consent. When those two principles are at play, we act immediately to ensure that uh, we do not no harm indeed, and that if consent has been withdrawn, we must also withdraw any kind of action. That's it. Do you personally think this incident has undermined the credibility of Amnesty International? I, no. I, I don't know what incident you're talking about, okay. but no, I don't believe that um, people who are from the region and in the region understand that this has not had any impact. What about Beijing? It might probably use this against the organization. How are you going to deal with that? I've absolutely very committed and dedicated to continuing the work that we've done. The Chinese authorities have repeatedly uh, accused Amnesty International of many, uh, many things. Um, there is nothing new. Every time we highlight uh, the human rights record of a country, uh, usually the government of that country and sometimes uh, their supporters will accuse us of being a against that country. So what China is uh, accusing us of is in keeping uh, with the playbook of authoritarian leaders, which is to try to detract from the key message and from their own violations and behavior. Have you ever had to take any actions to counter such attacks? All the time. <laughs> I mean, all the time, it, you know, when China accuses us of being um, uh, pro-Western, for instance, in our human rights advocacy, uh, we usually um, are able to do two things. One is to demonstrate that as a human rights organization, Amnesty International equally focus on the United States, China, Russia, Mali, a range of other countries, okay? So the second thing is that um, we just issued a, a, a report on the state of human rights around the world, and in that report, we actually alleged that the Western countries were guilty of double standard yeah. because they were privileging one conflict in Ukraine over many other conflicts, and they were failing to um, adopt uh, a global uh, perspective on the protection of human rights. And let's talk about uh, some human rights issues in Taiwan. Uh, Taiwan is the first place to legalize same-sex marriage in Asia and in, in May the government also passed a bill to allow same-sex couples to yeah. adopt a child. So what's your comment on such progress? In yes. Formidable. What else can be improved? It's formidable. You know, yeah. uh, is is that's what I was telling you. Taiwan is on a good path for human rights protection, and it must continue independently of what's happening. There is currently one issue with um, uh, the, the 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 right um, the equality bill, which uh, in that it is excluding wife or husband or who's one of the partner is uh, coming from um, or is a Chinese national. So we understand you know, the, the sensitivity of the issue. Um, but we are insisting that this is creating a, a discriminatory dimension which frankly is almost could almost be seen a bit as ridiculous because if you're a straight couple, that is not uh, a problem. So why impose that in the case of um, a same-sex couple makes no sense whatsoever. So that's one example of um, a step that could be taken uh, and should be taken fairly uh, immediately.